Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. A total of 11 of the confirmed 15 COVID-19 patients have recovered. Government provides relief to the unemployed as a result of COVID-19. And the Ministry of Agriculture assists with payments to banana farmers. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Commander Center for the National Response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. 11 of St. Lucia's 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19 have recovered. The Chief Medical Officer urges St. Lucians not to let their guards down and to continue adhering to the stipulated protocols from the Department of Health and Wellness. St. Lucia continues on a 10-hour curfew from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. Some of the national protocols which apply to this include remain at home, living only for food or medical purposes, avoid mass crowd events and social gatherings, practice physical distancing, and good personal hygiene. The public is also advised against going to public places with flu-like symptoms, including fever, coughing, and sneezing. When visiting the supermarket or public places, refrain from touching items unless you intend to purchase them. Essential service workers and the elderly are granted time for grocery shopping to facilitate their timely return to their posts and homes respectively. The public is asked to exhibit patients while these segments of our population are being served. Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, urged the public to adhere to the stipulated protocols. She also provided an update on the well being of St. Lucia's confirmed cases. As of April 14, 2020, St. Lucia has a total of 15 confirmed cases of COVID 19. Follow up tests were also conducted on the confirmed cases in care, and to date, a total of 11 of the confirmed 15 COVID 19 patients have recovered and have been discharged from the hospital. Presently, there are 25 persons in quarantine and 20 in isolation. Quarantine is used to separate and to restrict the movement of persons who are well and may have been exposed to a communicable disease such as COVID-19. This quarantine period allows for monitoring of contacts who develop signs and symptoms over the incubation period of the particular disease. We use the designated quarantine facilities for persons who travel into St. Lucia from areas of high risk and persons who were in contact with any positive cases who do not have signs and symptoms. There are certain cases where an assessment is done by the Ministry of Health and that individual may require home quarantine. One example is someone who is confined to the bed and is not able to function dependently. Isolation, however, is used to separate known ill persons who have a communicable disease like COVID-19 from others who are healthy. Isolation restricts the movement of ill persons to help stop the spread of infection. In St. Lucia, positive COVID-19 cases are kept in isolation. Isolation is also done for persons who have flu-like symptoms who were in contact with positive cases and patients but have not yet been confirmed as COVID-positive cases. These individuals are also kept in isolation until their results are received. Despite the structures being in place and other commercial entities such as hardware stores being open, the public is reminded that the country is still on national scale down and individuals are only to leave their homes for essential goods. The chief medical officer indicated that the rules of physical distancing and other recommendations must be observed at all times as St. Lucia is still at a very critical position in the response to the national COVID-19 threat. We note that there are many people out and some persons are not adhering to the rules of physical distancing. We also note that persons have come out without the use of their masks. One of the recommendations include the use of a face mask or scarf when going to public places such as the supermarkets and stores. The face mask or scarf may be used for source control by reducing potential exposure risk from infected persons during the pre-symptomatic period. For a face mask to be effective in reducing infection, they must be used properly. Some basic guidelines include ensure that the mask is clean before its use. Wash your hands with soap and water or alcohol-based hand and sanitizer before touching the mask. The mask should be held by the ties or the loops only. 
the coverings should be should be fit and they should be fit tightly but comfortably to allow for breathing without restrictions do not touch your eyes your nose or your mouth when the mask is on your face and when removing the mask cloth masks should be washed daily after use do not place the mask on the forehead or below the chin do not remove the masks to talk and to quarrel persons should avoid using their mobile phones while wearing a mask the public is asked not to use medical supply masks, surgical and N95 masks, which must be reserved for healthcare workers, first responders, and people who are known to be sick. The public should use the handmade cloth masks instead. The Department of Health and Wellness urges the public to continue to follow all protocol as stipulated by the department. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney on Wednesday, 8th April 2020, presented the government's social stabilization program for St. Lucia in response to the impact of COVID-19. The program aims to bring immediate relief to those who have lost their jobs and income earning opportunities due to the effects of COVID-19. More in this report. The COVID-19 pandemic has no doubt impacted economies across the globe and St. Lucia in no way has been spared. Many people in the hospitality industry and domestic sector have as a result lost their jobs. The government of St. Lucia, in an effort to assist those impacted by the pandemic, felt it was extremely important to focus on a social stabilization program. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, during his address where he presented the social stabilization program, noted that while the funds may not replace the salaries lost, it will soften the economic blow and provide some level of relief. The focus of the social stabilization program is twofold. The persons who have completely lost their income and the more vulnerable persons in our society, the elderly, persons on the poverty list, and persons waiting to be on the poverty list. So firstly, the persons who've lost their jobs. Temporary income support will be provided to the NIC contributors and non-NIC contributors for a period of three months in the first instance. With respect to NIC contributors, a monthly payment relative to your salary of no less than $500 and $1,500 a month will be offered, depending on what your salary was, for a period of three months in the first instance, starting in April. Persons eligible for this program had to have paid contributions to the fund for at least one month prior to February 2020. They must have become unemployed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. They must not have been in receipt of any other benefits from the NIC. The NIC allowance is estimated to cost between $33 million and $80 million over a period of three months, depending on the number of eligible persons. Our review will, be, will then be conducted to determine whether an extension for another three months will be needed. The government will provide a subsistence allowance to persons who have been displaced through loss of employment or income as a result of COVID-19. This income support will be in the amount of $500, $500 monthly for three months. This is expected to be in excess of $16.8 million based on the number of eligible persons. The Prime Minister highlights then that the current situation brought to the fore the importance of persons signing up to NIC. He noted that for those not making a contribution and who the government will be providing support to, a precondition will be that they must sign up to the NIC. The National Insurance Corporation, NIC, indicates that it has taken extraordinary measures in response to COVID-19. According to an issued press statement, it noted that the coronavirus pandemic has put a serious strain on healthcare systems and economies of many countries, St. Lucia included. Alongside the direct health risk of contracting COVID-19, many workers have been laid off or made redundant with the closure of businesses, particularly in the tourism sector. There is an expectation from its contributors that the NIC will intervene and provide some economic relief beyond its normal payment of benefit claims. 
To help workers navigate the economic hardship arising from COVID-19, the NIC has moved quickly to put measures in place to provide income support to contributors directly affected by the virus. The program is expected to cost anywhere from $40.1 million to $80.2 million over a three-month period covering the months of April, May, and June. Payments for the month of April are being planned for the last week in April or the soonest practicable time thereafter. Under the NIC Economic Relief Program, the NIC will pay 50% of insurable earnings salary amount on which contributions are levied, subject to a minimum payout of $500 and a maximum of $1,500 monthly to persons unemployed as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. In other words, a person with a monthly salary of $3,000 or higher will receive $1,500. A person with a monthly salary between $1,001 and $2,999 inclusive will receive 50% of salary. A person whose monthly salary is $1,000 or less will receive $500. Who qualifies? All individuals who contribute to the NIC who were in employment in February 2020 and are currently out of work as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. Payments are to employees only, not employers. To be entitled to benefit or to meet the qualifying criteria, the claimant must have contributed to the fund for at least one month prior to February 2020, and the claimant must be unemployed as a result of COVID-19. This is NTN Nightly. We'll be right back. The 2020 Inter-District Primary School Track Championships comes to the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds on Tuesday, March 24, 2020. Come cheer as primary school students from across the island battle for athletic supremacy. Which district is going to be crowned champion? St. Lucians, make your way to the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds on Tuesday, March 24 to support St. Lucia's best primary school athletes as they race for the gold. Welcome back. The Ministry of Agriculture assists in settling outstanding payments to banana farmers. Amanda Faye Clark has the details. The move, which comes as a response to a breach on the part of Winfresh to provide payments to farmers through the NFTO, is seen as timely as agriculture officials work to address concerns by farming and agriculture constituents in keeping their livelihoods buoyant and in securing local food sources. Chairman of the National Fair Trade Organization, the NFTO, Eustace Monroe, says he is elated by the Agriculture Ministry's assistance in settling outstanding payments to banana farmers, which have been delayed for about five weeks. I'm grateful and I have to demonstrate gratitude on behalf of the NFTO and the farming community, especially banana farmers, for this government response. Um, government understood the plight of farmers. Government understood where farmers were. They were not able to go over to supermarkets, at least to replenish their stock, when all others were able to have done that. So this gesture is something that is really, really appreciated, and we're indeed grateful for this government response, and government understood. And um, the minister, in his efforts, really attempted hard so that the farmers could have been would have been able to get this benefit. This is not the first time that the Agriculture Ministry has stepped in to prioritize the welfare of farmers, where Winfresh failed to meet its obligations to the NFTO and the local banana farming community. As Agriculture Minister Ezekiel Joseph explains, a restructuring of Winfresh is even more critical now as the industry faces additional unique challenges posed by COVID-19. That advance payment is going to come from our COVID restructure plan for the government as far as giving support to agriculture, which of course include the urban farmers. So based on discussions with the Prime Minister, Minister of Finance and Cabinet, we agreed that we should approach the Invest St. Lucia, where Invest St. Lucia would advance the government $1 million in the first instance, so at least they would be able to have a very enjoyable um, Easter. In the coming weeks, Minister Joseph vows to engage other Windward Island agriculture ministers to make good on its promise to the farming community to ensure the necessary adjustments are made within Winfresh to better serve the needs of the banana industry for which it was first commissioned. 
From the Ministry of Agriculture, this is Amanda Ficklock reporting. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's Nouvelle au Creole. Merci, Otara Janel. Merci, Madame. Département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement, c'est le GIS. À ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA, NTN, Capozato, Nouvelle en Creole. Capozato, Primus Hutchinson. Le magasin qui a vendu hardware, ça veut dire des outils et des matériaux pour le service Kai, et bien pour bâtir Kai. J'avais eu une opération en bas du protocole Corona, ça veut dire ce principe qui ne peut ni poursuivre. Ce ministre des Affaires, Commerce et Investissement, Affaires des Consommateurs, parmi l'autre, on est à Bradley Félix qui fait déclaration ça là, devant une discussion à ce NTN. Selon on est à Félix, Décision pour quitter ce magasin matériau viré en opération. C'est pas une décision qui le premier ministre Chasney point par Lyon. Ministre des Affaires et Investissement a dit que le premier ministre là et le cabinet là point Didier Hod, chef officier médical, Dr Sharon Belmer George, et le ministre de Santé. On a Félix remarqué que la décision en fait pour considérer l'opération ce magasin là, mais il faut suivre même où est qui supermarket qu'à suivre. So, nous nous cachons les débats, nous cachons les yon, nous en disons en, en crisis de l'eau, mm -hmm. en chai place par cas de l'eau, et en chai moun pané de l'eau la caillou, et en chai moun kagade, et sous les calter bas ça, mais nous vous faisons bas pour try um, mettre de l'eau en disant tank et bien en bas comme ça. Mm -hmm. So, nous 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 dit nous caï bas moun calter l'occasion, opportunity ça pour y ça aller, gain water tank. Gain ciment, gain c'est bas ça pour y mettre tant que y monte, gain pipe fitting yo pour y mettre tant que y monte. En l'autre bas nous considère c'est en um, saison cyclon qui vient. Et c'est en c'est en saison nous passe à prédire qui ça qui a fait. Mais nous voulons tout le monde préparer. Et c'est un bon temps pour le monde préparer puis on chaye mon la caillou. La nuit on chaye papa qui 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 a fait various travail maçon oui mais mais il pas jamais un caillou même puis dès là on on va venir au cas où on charpentier d'accord mais si c'est un gros charpentier avec gars la porte les cartes ici qui a travaillé tout ouais so actuellement il y a tout home tout mon home il y a qui ça joue une opportunité pour y faire by caillou même ok pour pour manger caillou pour saison hurricane là en parmi ces magasins que j'ai trouvé considération et permission pour opérer, c'est SNS, Flavor et Voyager. Les étudiants qui ont caillé à résultat de maladie corona, j'ai trouvé thème de coliologie comme à ces conseillers, tout étudiant qui ne poursuivent plus les soins par des caillé. C'est le ministre de l'Éducation, honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert, qui fait annonce à la par des étudiants adressé à la dimanche passé. Selon Dr. Rigobert, les étudiants et les instituteurs qui ont pour développer plus de collaboration devant cet assalat qui a apporté autant de pèse à son éducation PIA. Selon Dr. Rigobert, des grands efforts et initiatives qui les éducateurs ont déjà fait, c'est un qui est appréciable et extraordinaire. Le ministre de l'Éducation a fait l'assurance qui est le seul école qui a organisé à la façon dont il n'y a pas de pièces étudiants qui ont été derrière. Côté, il n'y a pas qu'à trouver l'occasion pour suivre le programme d'instruction. Pour ce salaire, le ministre a fait un appel pour les parents pour avoir plus fort l'intérêt à un programme d'éducation pour sa fin. Parmi ces diverses méthodes d'instruction, c'est le son par diverses organisations médias du pays. Ça veut dire radio, télévision, internet, par livre l'école, même en parmi l'autre façon. Docteur Rigobert aussi a annoncé que la CAINI est un moment pour ces instituteurs à ces façons pour servir ces outils technologiques pour engager ces étudiants. Le ministre de l'Éducation a fait l'assurance pour les teachers, enfin les instituteurs et les étudiants qui n'ont pas ces technologies, mais n'ont pas de manière pour trouver. Le ministre a décidé de corriger ça par renforcer la connexion entre les instituteurs et les étudiants. Quand ils ont trouvé ceci pour ça, et aussi pour les parents qui ont expliqué ces difficultés dans la situation. Le ministère de l'Éducation a aussi entré à un gymnase et puis divers collègues de business pour assister les instituteurs, les étudiants et les parents. 
Troisième thème, les sont l'école pour ces éditeurs là qui a là qui a été toujours car commencé les 20 en mois avril 2010 mais la caille en session de et travail et puis les administrateurs les instituteurs pour former plein d'étonnements du son à façon pour servir technologie des médias pour conduire ces solutions ça là les 13 mois là Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné a annoncé plan pour apprêter un comité qui est responsable pour planer opération activité commerciale à total à PIA. Premier ministre Chasné, qui était adressé à la nation à dimanche passé, déclaré que lui et puis même le cabinet a décidé pour apprêter le comité Salah qui est responsable pour guider opération activité commerciale à total. Premier ministre a dit que ça a fait et puis collaboration secteur privé et département de santé publique côté tout protocole qui est en place avant si opération des activités commerciales ça la vie qui a marché comme doit être à pays cette ci Premier ministre Chasney a fait un annoncement à la Fédération à comprendre que toutes ces précautions ça là et que l'équipement de santé établi c'était pour sauver la vie cette les siens principalement les gens qui ont souffert et puis ça a pressure problème d'étouffement avec les plus grands citoyens qui ont trouvé les plus sensibles pour diverses maladies. On a le Premier ministre Chasné remercie tout le monde qui prédit et qui a continué à prédier pour ses poids, pas seulement pour lui et mon cabinet avec les travailleurs de santé, PIA, mais pour tout cette liste, pour tout cette liste et cette liste entièrement. Et, messieurs, mesdames, ça c'est côté nous, nous avons une nouvelle nous. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Pour avoir une invitation pour je ne puis moi considérer quand ça fait la vie, les gens posent leur nouvelle en créole. Après ça, mon grand vieux posent leur Chanel. Merci à Pil Primus. The St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority Slasper advises customers requiring access to the seaports, port castries, and view fort for clearing of personal effects, barrels, packages, boxes, etc., to be guided as follows. One customer only per transaction will be directed by the port police officer or officers on duty to the shed. A limit of 10 customers at any one time will be facilitated in the customer area and a safe distance of at least 6 feet must be maintained. Only upon completion of the transaction and delivery of the personal effects, the driver should be contacted and will be directed by the port police officer on duty. Customers are required to wear masks upon entering the ports. Effective 14th April 2020, operations at the sheds are from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mondays to Fridays. Slaspa stands committed to serving its customers and requests the cooperation of the public in keeping the established protocols for COVID-19 as it relates to social distancing. For more information, please feel free to contact the director of Seaports at 457-6100. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Michelle Norville.